Hello guys, Nato Acer. So if you click on this video, you either saw it on my MMG SV blog channel or you click on the link from my private video, which is part of the Rewind episode 2 about Chris Pranger. So I said in that video before, unfortunately, the original video was one hour because I kind of went more in detail of what happened, what went wrong, why is it wrong. And kind of put some theory of why he did what he did. And like I said, it is an unfortunate. And another correction is that this actually happened, if I remember, on September of 2015, I think. That's close I can remember now. And it is an unfortunate that he was let go. A lot of ramification have been happened. One is, spoiler, he was the voice of the first boss in Star Fox Zero. Well, they had to replace him because he doesn't work anymore. And yes, as part of the surprise, I guess you can say about Nintendo Treehouse is that they do, they, a lot of those people in Treehouse, they do their own voices on the game. I mean, I really don't care who voice who, you know? I mean, in my opinion, it doesn't have to be always a Sean Chamel, a Troy Baker, Norlin North, Tim Curry, whoever, you know. And if somebody's good or passionate enough, hey, I accept it. Case in point, Dynasty Warrior 9, Vox Studio, I know they're not that good, but at least it's somebody new. I mean, no offense, I know Troy Baker is awesome. He's the number one best voice for whether it's anime or video game or anything. I get it, but, you know... For me, it's not that a big deal, you know. No offense to Troy Baker, but he's one of the best best voice actors. So with that said, yeah, that's one of the kind of like the unintentional scoop was that some of the games, they do their own voices. Is it wrong? No. Voice is a voice. It, it is what it is. So and there you go. So like I said in this video, it's going to be the three part of why I think he got fired. And I'm going to try to explain it more in brief summary rather than a one hour thing for the first one was basically the decision of to localize which game is which first of all again it is no surprise but what Chris Pranker did kind of confirmed it more and as of right now that's anytime when you ask the title hey are you gonna localize this game localize the game now they're gonna probably always think well don't you want more money well we want more money but we know it's not gonna sell Again, it's not really so much of a secret, but it's more of now it's confirmed. And that's what happened there is that when he gave an example of Xenoblade Chronicle for the Wii, yes, believe it or not, in Nintendo, they were not going to release it in America. Origin, the original plan was the game was not even going to be released in the U.S. Yeah, they're going to release it in Europe with European dub. Again, that's fine with me. Voice, whoever voice, as long as it's English dub, I'm cool with it. That was a deal. And then, but because people said, don't you want more money? And finally, Nintendo said, hey, you know what? Fine. Nintendo of Europe already did the heavy lifting. They did all the localization. Let's just use their European build. Let's make it a domestic version, NTSC version. There you go. But there was a lot of resistance and hesitant because, again, like kind of like what Chris Pranker said, don't you want any, don't you want money? And the reality is, Nintendo is not that stupid. Whether you like it or not, I know you say, oh, this should be for the fans, you know. Nintendo, well, you gotta understand that Nintendo is known for kind of barely listening to their fans. I'm, that's not a joke, not an insult. That's something that's common knowledge. And second, they always do their own way, their old way, the Japanese way. I do sound like it's political, I do apologize, but it's not. It's just Nintendo is an old company. They see things differently to some extent. And like I said, hopefully that Shuntaro, since he has some influence because of the West, hopefully might change around. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. So that's the reason, one of the reasons why he probably got fired was because of the decision of which game to be localized or not. It is sort of a big deal because now that could ruin the image, which it probably doesn't, but for some people, they're putting it in the back of the head. So the second one is about Sakurai. All right, so again, it's a big deal what he said about Sakurai. Well, again, the key word there is scoop. And that uh, you have to understand that, of course, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is coming this year. Again, getting a lot of hate, a lot of people don't like that. And sometimes it does take a toll. 
but there are some times that he was saying that sometimes he makes weird decisions, such as in Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U. The lack of a single robot story mode, whether it's adventure mode or the subspace emissary. The reason why he removed it was because of what happened to do Super Smash Bros. for Brawl. Super Smash Bros. Brawl for the Wii because it wasn't a worldwide release and it was first real and it was a four weeks apart. That's also the problem. Because at the time, Nintendo was not really good with worldwide release. The, the Japanese had it for a month. Beep. Of course, the Japanese decided to stream it, put it on YouTube. You can't say it's copyright because, you do, keep in mind, for sales doctrine, the minute you purchase, purchase the game legally, you follow the proper channel, you can do whatever you want with it to some extent. So they upload the video on YouTube, people were watching it. And Sakurai kind of said, oh, man, that ruined the thunder, the excitement, all that hard work for nothing because, oh, people are on YouTube. Now it's like, they played the game? Eh, well, good cutscene. And for Sakurai, he doesn't really like that. And to some extent, what Pranger basically unintentional said, and remember I said a keyword, unintentional is, Sakurai is very sensitive for a lot of these things. When there's a lot of negative, you know, i.e. the Waluigi incident... He does get frustrated. He does get mad. He works so hard, and he likes people to be excited. He works so hard, time and time again, to basically make sure that it's not leaked, that it's, everybody gets excited, everybody can say, oh my gosh, oh my god, that character's there. But again, you know, sometimes it doesn't go his way, and he gets a little bit frustrated. Understandable. That's why a lot of people kind of say the quotation is the... Well, the... The in the gist of it is he was very sensitive, sensitive about it. Again, kind of scooping. Oh, where do you know Sock right now is very sensitive about this type of thing? Again, he probably doesn't want people to know about that, but it is something that hey, you know, it's his personality. I don't hate him for that because he's a hard worker. Look at the recent Smash Brother direct on August. He was his eyes were red. He was pushing his, himself hard, and guess what? Even if it's day off, he would work on the game. That's how dedicated he is. And there's still not people out of happy. Not a lot of people always happy. It is part of the business. That's the reason why sometimes that's like a like a red flag there. And then the third one basically is he unintentionally insulted the JRPG, JRPG fan and the Smash the Smash community. There, believe it or not, I don't know. It was I think it was unintentional, but he was basically saying that. They don't know anything about what Nintendo does, so you gotta chill out. And I'm like, wow, so that basically, hey, you know, hey, whoa, totally down there. Because again, to some extent, is he representing Nintendo? Is he not? Is he Chris Pranger of Treehouse or Chris Pranger just himself? It's kind of hard to say because, especially when you're representing a company, and a lot of people kind of took it the wrong way or they took it differently by thinking, you know what? No, he basically, basically Nintendo saying that they don't care about the Smash community, the FGC, and about the JRPG fan because, again, they're going to play Chronicles. That's why they kind of, like, hesitated to bring it out. Now they're saying because they're not really that much. They don't know anything about it. We're Nintendo. We're better than you. I mean, a lot of that. And, again, this is in 2015. got to keep that in mind. And to some extent, again, the community didn't like that. Nintendo, the Nintendo fans didn't like that. Remember, during the GameCube, the Wii U, they a lot of the Nintendo fans were having a hard time supporting them. And the casual ones like, well, this is all about Nintendo. The Wii was an anomaly because the Wii sold a lot. But because of the, the general consumer... The casual gamer who basically touched a video game for the first time. Oh, wow. So there's games such as for casual. You know, that's the way the Wii series, the Wii Sports, Wii Play, the Brain Age. Games are so simple that for sim- for casual people, gamer, that's what I'm trying to say, you can play. That's why the Wii era or the Wii times was very anomaly. But when it came to the Wii U, well, they're trying to market for both sides. The Wii left because of the mobile gaming. The Wii U, hey, you know, where's my third-party games? Where's the online? Where's this feature? They're not there. I like Nintendo games, but I can't only afford one console. I'm going to move to PS4 or Xbox One. There you go. And at the time, Chris Banker basically kind of, like I said, unintentionally sort of 
jab on the JRPG fan and the Smash community fan. I'm just talking about the FGC. Again, that doesn't look good on Nintendo. Of course, then, of course, after that. Yeah, so he got fired. And the reason is the most people said the reason of, you know, in record, the reason why he got fired was he broke NDA. And after a while, he did make a post on Facebook saying that, yeah, he was, that he was in the wrong. Nintendo did the right thing. And again, it is kind of sad that he got fired. (laughs) It was sad. But yeah, so that's a summary of what the Rewind Part 2 is. And that one, it was very, very detailed and every bit I, I want to make my point on. Like, a lot of the ramification of doing it, of course, the aftermath. And there you go. That's why you kind of know that there's not a lot of Nintendo employees or personnel ever being interviewed. It's either whether it's Reggie, whether it's Miyamoto, whether it's the top Nintendo people, not the new one. I forgot their name. One of them who did uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, who else? Bill Trenton, Nate Difford. Yeah, so you're not going to see Jose Otero getting interviewed. You're not going to see Rich getting get interviewed or even Audrey, be nice to Audrey, Drake, going to be interviewed. Because especially a Treehouse member, they're not allowed. Unless it's your, your name is Nate, <laughs> Nate Dilford or Bill Trenton. That's it. And that's how secretive Nintendo is. So, again, as of right now, what's happening to Chris Banker? Who really knows? Uh, I mean, it's been, what, three years? It's been three years that this happened. And, you know, it is funny. September 2015, I'm doing this on September 2018. So, it is exactly three years. <laughs> Okay, so enough funny there, but again, to Chris Spranger, maybe finally he got a job, now maybe he's doing better now, but at the time, it was his dream job to work at Nintendo, and he was forced to let go, so it is, so, yeah, so, this is a summary, good, it's under 15 minutes, heck, it's under 13 minutes, so with that, thanks for listening.